Hi! I'm Annika and I'm taking you through Tokyo's gardens and parks. Today I'm in QC Q and it snowed yesterday. But unfortunately, because we are really close to the sea here, it didn't stay really nicely. But there's still a little bit left. You can see on the water that it's also raining now. So the snow even goes faster. But well, that's Tokyo and we have to be happy that we have a little bit of snow each year. The Kyushiwari Q was a daimyo garden during the Edo period. It's a typical pond strolling garden, but later it came into the possession of the imperial household. That's why it also carries a special name. It's actually the Kyushiwari Q Onshiteyen, just like the Hamadi Q. And the onshi means it's an imperial gift. And in this case, because it's a public garden managed by Tokyo, it's a gift to the public. I always call the Kyushiwari Q the little brother of Hamadi Q because it's just around the corner, both are imperial gifts but else they don't have much in common actually. Let's take a fast walk around the garden because I'm running low in battery, the cold even makes it go down faster. Yeah, they are continuously working on these bridges so they always dam the pond and not so much water is around the bridge it's a wooden bridge so it has to be renewed regularly or checked regularly if it's still safe This is a very small garden but still very nice and it's Yeni's favorite garden. Yeni is the founder of Real Japanese Gardens. In 2014 I took over but until then Yeni ran this site and she also wrote the ebook about this garden. So I actually never did the research, the deep research for this. Oh, you can see a small ravin over there. We go along it now. We are here close to the sea. Actually, this was part of Tokyo Bay and it was reclaimed to construct this garden. Um, and it was very common to bring the um, mountains to the gardens here in the flat area. Um, that's why we find ravens like these in some of Tokyo's gardens. So usually when you see something like this, it should give the feel to be in the mountains. We have a lot of interesting rocks here. It's called Nebukawa Yama. And the rocks used actually are called 
uh, Nebukawaishi. So it's a hill made of Nebukawa rocks. Yeah, I have to speed up a little. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, we can slow down again. Because right after I said that we have to be fast, my battery sprang from 5% to 0 and so the camera turned off. I always try to do these garden walks in one run so I don't have to change batteries because it's very annoying to change batteries. But well, yeah. They are searching for food. Usually these are water birds, so they are on the water a lot. They can be very aggressive towards other birds, which are smaller. <laughs> The Kyu Shibari Kyu has a small hill covered in peonies. So if you like peonies, um, you may want to come here in around May. I think they will flower in May. And now, up to the flowering trees. You can see these, this pink flowering tree, that's a Jugatsu Sakura. So it's a cherry tree that's flowering in winter. I see so many tourists, especially in Shinjuku Gyoen, staying in front of the Jugatsu Sakura and are amazed that the Sakura is flowering at this time of year. But you know now that there are Sakura varieties that are indeed flowering in autumn or even in winter. The yellow one over here is winter sweet and it smells just wonderful. There are also different varieties of this one. There are filled ones, ones that are not filled. Some are red inside, some are not. Really beautiful. And over here is a plum orchard. But you can see the plums aren't open yet, only a little bit. This one here has two different colors on one tree. It has a pink branch.
Sorry. He saw my umbrella again. Yeah, we are almost finished now. Only a bit more to show. Usually I don't advise to go outside the race, especially in this case. Don't just climb up a hill. For taking pictures close to flowering trees um, it's a little bit difficult to say if you can step inside or not. Um, here in Kyushu Radikyu I would say yes and there are no fences around it but for example you can see here they built a fence so you cannot go inside here. In other gardens it's not allowed to go to the trees to take pictures. You have to see case by case. So this is the frost protection for the sago palms. And here in Kyushu Bedikyu, we actually have sago palms. So in other uh, gardens, they often put these up around dummies just to show it and because it looks nice. But here we have real plants, real pumps and it. This is one of the main viewing points of Kyushibadikyu. So it has a stone lantern with a big umbrella and three legs. So we can assume that it's a snow viewing lantern, but it's made of rough materials, which usually is a sign for the Yamagata style lantern. So yeah, here we have something in between and we often see that actually, that we have hybrids in stone lanterns or just um, ones that are unique because the owner of the garden wanted a unique lantern. You can also see that they made the garden very hilly, so we have many many hills around the pond. In other gardens we do not have it this obviously. Okay, I will end the video here. Oh, sorry, my umbrella again. Um, I will end the video here. I hope you liked it. And if you want to learn more about Japanese gardens, please buy our books or book a tour with me here in Tokyo. Bye!